child came in there loud, woke everybody and everything up. Loud and and we were looking we were looking crazy because when they realized that we were asleep, like the the other coworkers were like, Oh my gosh, we're so sorry that we were so loud. And then Sharkeisha had the nerve to fix her mouth and come in that room and say, and she was drunk. That's part of the problem, is we're going to get into mm-hmm. that in a second. It's Sharkeisha had a drinking problem. Um, but Sharkeisha came to the room and was like, um, you know, I was going to apologize for being loud, but y'all don't like me, so I'm not going to. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, 511 fam. Yes, it is D and J here, and we're here with another set of hot takes. So, of course, this is the 50 Lamb Chronicles. And for those who don't know, let me let you know what we're all about. Here at the 50 Lamb Chronicles, we discuss everything from politics to pop culture. We represent 50 Lamb voices. We detail 50 Lamb experiences and we have and continue 50 Lamb conversations. So welcome or welcome back. And thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of the 50 Lamb Chronicles. Yeah, let's get into it. Yes. <laughs> I love so when you do this, the intro. <laughs> uh, yay. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for tuning in this episode. This episode is going to be another one of our fun bonus episodes for this month as we are wrapping up this year. Um, this episode is probably one that y'all weren't really expecting. <laughs> uh, we talked a little bit about how we met in the food industry and in the service yes. industry. And we're going to actually talk a little bit more about that. And just, this is going to be another fun episode of Story Times. We're going to be telling you the crazy <laughs> shenanigans that happen in food service. Because I don't yes. think people who've never worked in the food industry don't know what it's really like. Mm-hmm. So this episode is going to be about that. And I think we'll give you guys a, a better appreciation of the servers, bartenders, and, and cooks that you go out in public. And, wow. and maybe help you treat them a little nice. You know, <laughs> throw them a couple extra dollars. You know, something. <laughs> <laughs> tip so your thank servers you guys. and bartenders please tip your servers and bartenders um but thank you so much for tuning into this episode and welcome back to the 50 lamb chronicles very that <laughs> service industry oh my gosh right it's like you have to take a deep it's like a reality tv show it should be i don't know why like when i I tell you it should be a reality tv show there should be so many yes i forget all the love and hip-hops love and restaurant right love it (laughs) because child if there weren't some love triangles and foolishness going on so i guess i mean We've already, I think we said it in another episode, so we can just go ahead and talk a little bit about where we work. I hope mm-hmm. it doesn't end up being, like, super bashy about them. And Man, I hope, screw them Whatever. <laughs> right, screw them, honestly. So we worked at, we actually met working at Applebee's yes. um, in uh, one of the Applebee's in Atlanta, Georgia. We'll say mm-hmm. that. We'll keep it a yeah, little Yeah, we'll keep it vague. We'll keep it a little vague, <laughs> you know, because there are numerous um, Applebee's in Atlanta. So and we're working trash, at one of them, okay. and they're all garbage. Um, right? <laughs> Um, so, <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry, I just sometimes my Spanish just pops out at me. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we were we were working at this Applebee's, and there is a cast that I'm telling you we would have mm-hmm. had the best ratings oh, TV yeah. has ever seen. Right. We would probably still be on. Like it, that was a whole whole slew of hot mess in one place. And even the Where revolving even cast, start? they never let you down. <laughs> they never let you. So, you know what? I should probably start with before you got there. Okay, um, yeah, yeah. And we can lead up to, like, meeting. So mm-hmm. when I was at this Applebee's, when I first got there, I was actually transitioning out of another job. And I was leaving that job because I just really did enjoy it. I really didn't like it. It was the weirdest. I got, I remember, like, they were getting ready to fire me on the day that I quit because they were like, we just don't think you you like doing this. And I was like, I don't. I don't. I really <laughs> don't like doing this. This is not fun. This is not what I thought it was going to be. I think you guys lied to me in the interview and in the application. Y'all might want to change your language. And app- this is not what I thought it was. So I had actually worked at an Applebee's for about six months here, here in Alabama, one right down from my college. Mm-hmm. And um, I was like, oh, well, you know, 
I can try Applebee's. It wasn't too far from where I lived. I was like, this is, maybe we can make this work. I can mm-hmm. have a little part-time night job, even though I hate surfing. Like, yeah. I hate, I've hate. always hated serving. I hate serving. I love bartending. So, hate love serving. bartending. Hate serving. Um, So I apply and I literally, I remember walking into my interview. Um, I think I was like in slacks and a button down and fe- well, I guess I can say her name. I don't think she'll have a problem with me saying her name, but Faith was a manager. <laughs> um, And she, uh, she hired me on the spot. She was real cool. Yeah. Um. Hired yeah. me on the spot. Was like, hey, can, can you start next week? Like, we need to get this thing on the road. Like, blah 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 blah. blah. You know how to talk to people. This is not gonna be hard. So cool. I start working there, and um, there actually turned out to be some people who were working there who lived in the same apartment um, complex that I did. So they were in. The, they were like several apartments down, but they were in the same complex. And mm-hmm. um, there ended up being a girl who was from Alabama that worked there, and a cook from Alabama that worked there. And I ended up befriending <laughs> both of them. And um, they ended up being kind of like my little, like, oh, I like we got a connection. Like, I we got something in common. Mm-hmm. Um, even though the cook could not stand me at first. Like, it, it, <laughs> he there can't was, nobody. <laughs> nobody. But we eventually became cool. We eventually got really cool. But did not like nobody at first. And the girl, she was seemed a little ditzy. You know, she seemed a little um, aloof. Mm-hmm. Um <laughs> But I just thought it was what it was. And so right. um, long story short with her is we end up, I end up like, oh, she's kind of cool. I think that's so, like, she's okay. And she ends up needing a place to stay. And as you know, she ends up becoming my roommate. Mm-hmm. Worst decision of my life. Like literally <laughs> in the top five things I would actually do over, that might legitimately be on the uh-huh. list of things I would do differently. And the crazy um, thing is, but, when I met you, you you hadn't even felt that way yet, and and I felt yet. that way as your friend. You knew, <laughs> yes, you knew before I did, and that I mean, it just <sighs> what can I say? Shit, shit just got real. Like it got so real after um, things got settled. So mm-hmm. I think my first kind of crazy experience that I had working at this particular location um, was. After serving, I remember there was a moment when I was about to get ready to, like, quit. Because I was just like, I don't know. Like, they're not paying me what I need. Like, we, for those who don't know, servers get paid, like, $2 an hour. Like, it was $2.13 an hour, and you take home your tips mm-hmm. after you pay the company what you're supposed to pay them. Mm-hmm. And so, that I mean, like, $2.13 an hour is not anything. Anything. That's nothing. And Tip we're talking sometimes working. <laughs> We're talking sometimes working like a 10 hour shift. Mm-hmm. So you're, that's $20 gross. Mm-hmm. Like, um, so that's not even like taxes. Out. <laughs> like, like that's okay. So um, I was, I, I decided I was like thinking about leaving and I had taken on another job and they were offering me more hours. And they're like, well, how about instead of you leaving, you start to like bartend, you start to like expedite. So I started doing other things. Mm-hmm. So I started learning some other things. Actually, before I get into what happened at this one, I want to tell one quick story. Mm -hmm. Um, And that was, I was at my first Applebee's location and I was bartending one night and I was a bar back because I was in college. So they Mm -hmm. didn't have us running the bar by ourselves. I would come in when one of the other bartenders was there and I would just have their back. I'd make all their drinks that were coming through, you know, on the tickets and they would take care of the bar and Mm -hmm. I would just keep the, the restaurant taken care of. And so one night um, they called me in because the bartender was sick and they're like, Hey, like you get to have all the tips. The bar manager is going to run the bar. He's like, the bar manager is going to run the bar and you'll have all the tips and the drinks that he makes and the drinks that you make. And we just need you here tonight. So I said, okay, I got you. And so the bar manager was actually the youngest manager. And he was like, maybe at the time I was 19, 20, maybe 21. Mm-hmm. I, I think I might have been 21. I had to have been 21 to, to be for serving alcohol. So I was 21. Um, and he might have been like 23, 24. He was not much older than me. Mm-hmm. So he leaves the bar. I'm working the bar. I'm slinging these drinks, taking care of these tickets, just getting everything snatched. And you know, like when you can feel a presence behind you. I was washing some dishes and I could feel a presence behind me because I yeah, just kind of had zoned in, in washing dishes. So I turn around and there's this huge guy. He had to be like six four, six five, standing right behind me in the bar. Like he's in the bar. He went and he was a patron. He was drunk, 
Mm-hmm. He came from his seat to around. And were y'all the bar. in a horseshoe thing? Like how we were in a it? horseshoe. Oh, yes. uh-uh. and we were face to face in the horseshoe, and he was blocking the exit. So oh, I'm like, uh-uh. hey, I was like, what are you doing back here? And for those of you who don't know, I mean, like my picture doesn't do it justice, but I'm like five seven, <laughs> five eight, <laughs> um, 130 pounds, soaking wet. Like maybe, <laughs> right. maybe depending on the day. <laughs> so you give um, yourself some. <laughs> so you know, like I'm not a big like person. I'm mm-hmm. I've got long limbs, but I'm not like a big person. This man is like six four, six five. Like he's right. huge, and he's got maybe good two hundred or something pounds on him. And I'm like, um, what, what? You can't be back here. Like, what are you doing? And I just look at him. I was like, what are you doing? And I was like, you can't be back here. I was like, you got to go back to the other side. And I say it like real joking, real playful. He's like, oh no. I'm just thinking, okay, he's drunk. I'm just like, he's drunk. He's fine. He's like, no, I'm, I'm good. I was like, no, you're not good. You can't, you can't be on this side of the bar. You need to get. Let's get you back on over there. And then he like jerks back and is like, no. And in that moment, I said, all right. Now I have one <laughs> a of lot two of choices. weapons back here. <laughs> right. There's so many. I had a knife back there too because I had the, one of the big like butcher knives for cutting mm-hmm. up. Um, we had the slicer for the fruit, but we would cut off like cut the core or we cut different things with the little knife. And so I was like, okay, I had a knife back there, and then I was just gonna maybe hit him with a glass. I was like, I, I was gonna say I could easily grab a bottle. I'm gonna and... take one of these big old glasses <laughs> or a bottle, and we're just gonna have. I'm just gonna have. But in luckily, like he starts getting loud and he acts like he was maybe about to do some. And then luckily our kitchen manager just happened to walk up and he just, he was another like six foot four, 200, 300 something pound guy himself. So it didn't take much for old drunk dude to go sit down then. Mm-hmm. But I was just like, okay, that could have totally gone like wrong. That could have, we could have had a situation on our hands. Cause okay. even if bar manager came out here, he ain't, but maybe five, nine, 140 pounds. He ain't big either. So we was like, you <laughs> both be looking crazy. Y'all gonna um, jump that man. Hey, big people we fall could have. hard. <laughs> they do, don't they? And then he was drunk, so I right. still had my reflex. He, he, yeah, he would have failed. I should have done a little, little, you know, rope dope or something. You know, give him a little, <laughs> knock him off his kilter. But um, that I had to give that preface because I was I were, was working the bar, so I've mm-hmm. had to work the bar. I've had I've learned a couple of different areas. So back to Georgia, I was at this Applebee's, and it's New Year's Eve. <laughs> And New Year's Eve is like one of our busiest nights in business, you know, outside of like, you know, Veterans Day and like um, Valentine's and, and, you know, holidays, things like that. New Year's Eve is kind of a big deal in the business. Mm -hmm. And so I remember I was expediting the food um, most of the night because it was just like nonstop. And for those who don't know, like a food expo is like the person who like, Make sure the plates come out hot. Make sure the plate looks right. You are a keeps beast it clean. on Expo. <laughs> Child, I, lo- I used to love expediting. So I, I mean, like you, we would. I so I was, I was, and I had just started Expoing at that point. So it wasn't my best yet. That, that might have actually been my first night Expoing was New Year's Eve night. And they, what they told me was like, we want you to run the back. We want you to run the whole back. Like they're going to be coming to you for anything they need. That's like okay, cool. I got, I can do that. I got you. Um. And at one point, they got so busy on the bar. I think they only had two bartenders. They needed me to come out there and help them on the bar. So I came out, helped them on the bar, went back in the kitchen. Now, we were, now I'm going to keep it 100. You know, now, when I was working in this location, we were a pretty turnt group. So mm-hmm. this night, we had, there was a couple that worked there. Um, one of the lead servers was, like, um, with one of the lead cooks. They were together, they were a couple. And they were, like, the turn-up couple. And so they had bought bottles of alcohol to serve to the employees for New Year's <laughs> Eve to get us turned because we obviously couldn't drink from the bar. Right. But they were like, hey, if you, if you give me um, $2, I'll pour you a shot, you know, of what they had. And I think it was, it was good, whatever it was. I'm not even going to, you know, do that. But they, we had drinks. <laughs> so I remember the girl poured me a drink and I'm having my drink. And out of nowhere, there's this, all this commotion. Now, I'm in the back of the kitchen, and I hear all this commotion. And, and a girl runs up, and she's like, oh, my gosh, we need somebody out here. So me and the lead cook both run out onto the floor because we're like, what's going on? Like, So we get out there, and there was a couple. Of, there was two couples. There was four women at a table. And one couple started arguing with the other couple, and they were drunk. That's what it was, and they were drunk. Mm-hmm. Um, one couple starts arguing with the other couple and they just start getting really loud and then they start fist fighting in the restaurant. So 
dude runs up the line, the lead cook, he's running up, I'm running up, and we separate this couple and we get them outside. So you, you obviously think, okay, that's gonna be the end of it. Everything's gonna like like wind down, we're gonna be good. Well, when we get them outside, now they actually end up coming up with a little nickname for me because I picked one of the, the one of the girls was like my size. So I just picked her up with one arm and just went out the door. Like, <laughs> look, we're going out here. Don't, don't even try to fight. You got, I got a couple inches of height on you. I might have 10 pounds on you. It's just, it, it is what it is. So you're coming with me. So I take her outside. And then the other guy, he tried to grab one of the girls and take her outside. But when they got outside, she ends up knocking him, punching him and knocking him on the ground, talking about, you done put your hand on the woman. And we ain't finna stand for that. So now all four women are trying to fight him. Not him. It was crazy. Yes. He was breaking up the fight, and now all four women That's are That's why I don't break him. up fights. That is exactly why I don't break up fights. I'm so, either jumping in, or I ain't got nothing to do with it. <laughs> so then he starts yelling, um, no, you need got to worry about it, because my B gonna handle you. My B gonna handle you. And I was like, you're B. Like, I'm thinking, oh, gosh. Here comes the girlfriend. They having to hold her back like a mad animal, like inside the building while we're outside. It was ridiculous. They actually ended up shutting us down. Like right after that, we were shut down within, <laughs> within 10, 20 minutes. And then to make matters worse, we're obviously shut down because people are fighting, right? So people, all the guests start leaving. We're getting the place cleaned up. There was a family that had walked in maybe five minutes before this happened. Oh, Huge boy. Hispanic family. It was like maybe 10 of them. They were sitting in like a big corner booth. And so they're 55. like, well, are we going to get, <laughs> yes, they were in 55. They're like, are we going to get something to eat? And, and we're like, no, no, just <laughs> but you can leave. They're like, but they're like, but we're sitting down. And so, so was everybody else. <laughs> I mean, like, cause first like a host told them and then the manager told them and they're like, no, we're not like, we're getting food. And we're like, who's going to cook? Who's going to make it? Right. Who's How you going to cook it? the food for you? <laughs> you need to get up and you need to leave. They're like, but you've already put our drinks on the table. Like somebody had already put their drinks down. And they're like, and? do you want a to-go cup? Right. Like, it, you're leaving. It was the crazy. Like, it was <laughs> absolutely psychotic. So half the team is like drunk. And then you got folks fighting. And and I was just Mad. like, oh my gosh. And my typical. nickname coming out of that night was Superman. Right. Typical. <laughs> Typical of the business. And this was all right before you started. You you good for breaking up a fight, though. I'll tell you that. You, oh. didn't, you didn't came to the rescue many a time. Oh, my goodness. I, I don't break up. Right. I just don't. Like, if I can't catch it before it starts, I listen. Because if, if I get hit, it's going to be a problem. And mm -hmm. I don't know how to control my emotion if I get hit. So I just don't. It, it's not a while. I don't know what takes over me. I don't know what takes over me. But I'm just like, no, we need peace. What do y'all do? <laughs> like, I mean, that's cool before, but once somebody swing, oh, I if I'm not jumping in it, somebody else got to do it because I I can't. It's not a good idea. It's not wise. It's just not. You know? That's true. That's yeah. That's you using your wisdom right there. You're yeah. right. You're right. It's not wise for me to do that. I, that's just because then it'll become a triple role. threat match. Exactly. Like exactly. Mm -hmm. These like <laughs> uh, I'm in this one now. Like <laughs> you swung on me. I'm gonna fight both of y'all. Like. <laughs> I don't care what y'all's beef was. I'm in this now. Like, you right. hit me. <laughs> so, okay, let's talk about when you started. Like, what yeah. was it like walking into the madhouse? Because it was a madhouse when you Well, see, the th but the thing was, I feel like at first, even though it was, you know, it still was what it was. I feel like at first, it was a pretty cool crew that we had at first. It was first, okay. Though. It was it, at first, Like, it was we okay. still would have fun and it you know it was a pretty cool crew at first you know mm -hmm. and then it was like when more started to trickle in is when it started getting weird but we yeah. had it was it was still like we would have fun at night it would be a pretty cool crew for the most part you know what i'm saying because i think when i started i literally started matter of fact i remember because you told me it was your last day bartending i started mm -hmm. on your last day bartending you did <laughs> and it's like you everybody did. was cool it was all right, you know, so I kind of stayed out the way at first. Whenever I first come around, like, I don't really give people my personality like that. I kind of just be kind of chill. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't really talk to nobody like that. I just kind of <laughs> observe, see what everybody's mm -hmm. giving. And then once this I see true. what everybody's giving, that's when I... But before I could even see what everybody's giving, your roommate was first on my list. You she remember? Was, <laughs> you immediately, I remember you immediately not liking her. Like you used to eat first her on the up. List. Oh, I used, used to, to eat tear her, her up. up. And oh, she yes. 
we would go back to the apartment. She's like, she doesn't like me. And I don't know what I've done to her. (laughs) And I'm just like, I don't either. Like, I don't know what you I Listen, (laughs) when I tell you, I just, I could feel it on her. It was a spiritual thing. It it, absolutely was. I could feel it on her. And it's just like, when I was sitting back observing, I'm like, something with her ain't right. Something Mm -hmm. with her ain't authentic. Because she would come across so like oh da, 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 nice and you know and you know how she talks but I could right. just tell that it's like something about her is not genuine and she's very mm-hmm. passive aggressive because it's like very. she would do this little nice cutesy you know aloof cheerleader thing but then in the next breath she would say something real underhanded and something real slick. underhanded yeah. and shy and I'm like, mm, yes I ain't really feeling her like that and then it was the night that I came because I at first I wasn't working nights and then they had started asking me to start working at night Mm -hmm. that one night when that manager from the other place came and it was chaos that night you know what the other ghetto one that wasn't far from us I think I know what you're talking about yes 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 yes, that fateful night and because didn't they come with like wasn't it like there wasn't it like a bunch of them I don't, even, I don't even remember. I think I just remember him the being place. there. And I remember yeah. because when I was working there, I was working at my other job. So I would come from my other job and go straight mm-hmm. there because it was like down the street. So yeah. literally I was like, I would be working literally all day from 8 a.m. to whenever I leave there at night. And so I remember he had told me, like, I think I was like the next person to be cut or whatever the case may be. And I feel like she used to close all the time. So she was supposed to be a closer. And I don't know what the tea was with that, but she made like this little comment of like, some like, oh, it ain't my fault. Other people got to work or I ain't tell, some, some little slick comment like one minute. that. The, the, the manager you talking about, they're the one who looked like um, Eddie Murphy in prosthetics, right? <laughs> I don't know about all that, but you Ball you know head. who I'm talking about. He came from the other ghetto one. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. The same, with the glasses and real, he used to wear them shirts that was real no, out there. <laughs> you know, no. Okay, so first of all, I was thinking about somebody else, but now I, I know who you're about, talking about. I was thinking about what short they with the gold too. A T. Yeah, he came from the the place off the main street on the east is over here. But he didn't have glasses. The one with the M glasses. had the glasses. Uh, uh-uh, the one with the M had the glasses. He did too. I don't. Know. Well, I feel like he had glasses on that night. Then maybe it was part of his. He might have had them on that night. Yeah, it might have been. <laughs> look, it might have been a fashion. Because the shirt choice. he had on was very much out there. <laughs> Now that that that's that's why I thought we were talking about the same person because definitely that very that. Yeah, I don't even okay, know if you going, remember going. that night, but. I was, because me and you had gotten kind of cool, so I was trying to, you know, withhold my restraint with her, because you, Mm -hmm. you know, you was just like, oh, you know, you just gotta, you and yo, oh, that's just how they are, you just gotta get to know, know I was trying, I was trying, because I had told her very bluntly, like, I don't fool with you like that, and I don't think she was used to anybody coming at her like that, but I was just like, I don't like you. Like, I had just told her straight up, I don't like you. I don't fool with you like that. Don't bother speak. You don't have to talk to me. But when she made that little comment, and then he was like, well, I told her, because I ended up getting stuck there. He was like, well, I told her you were supposed to be the one that was next. And she said, da, 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 da. He was being messy. I ain't gonna lie. He was being messy. Mm-hmm. He had a habit but, for that. And when I tell you, <laughs> I let, I went in and let have on her. I was over her. I could not. Uh. Like, I could not nah. and it was like from that point on there were so many times that was the beginning of the end for sure it, it was it, it was, the was. Beginning and, of the and end. It, it, what bothered me the most because i feel like one time she came up to me like oh i don't understand why you don't like me and i she and I'm did like, it more than once and i'm like don't ask me if you don't want me to tell you because when i tell mm-hmm. you and you know me like the way i talk mm-hmm. and i don't know if it's because where i'm from or what but the way i talk sometimes it comes off very like blunt it's very forward very, like it can yeah. be very yeah it can be very blunt no and if Absolutely. you're, if you're somebody like her who's you. passive aggressive, it's going to come off harsh. But it's just like, yeah. you ask me a question, I'm going to answer it. You know what I'm saying? I'm not finna sit here and babysit you and coddle you when I give you the answer. I'm finna tell you what you asked me. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And so like, for that was kind of like the beginning of the end. Every time I would try. And the closer me and you got, I feel like the more I disliked her because yes. what you really not finna do. Yes. Like, me mess with me is one thing i could i could just dismiss you on that but what you not gonna do is mess yes. over nobody that i fool with you're not gonna come yes. with my friends you're not gonna that's when my things friends. you're not gonna no, disrespect things my really friends. took a different no. direction 
that's it took a when different I was direction. like, you know what? Count your days, sis. <laughs> you know, I'm going to tell you a story. I don't know if I ever told you this story, but one time um, Aisha and another one of uh, my friends was staying over. And oh, I remember I, that. You do, so you do remember this. I remember this. that. Well, I'm going to tell the story and I'm going to call her Sharkeisha <laughs> because I got to get this off my soul. So Sharkeisha was out with some of our coworkers and they had gone out to get some drinks and they had turned up and me and my friends had turned up at the apartment and we were chilling and we were winding down. We were in the bed. We had a day planned of things to do the next day. So we were all in the bed. We were literally talking ourselves to sleep, like lights out, everything. She t- turns up to the apartment loud with people with her. And the way that they had to get to the bathroom is you basically, you have to go through the bedroom to get to the bathroom. Child came in there loud, woke everybody and everything up. Loud and and we were looking, we were looking <laughs> crazy because when they realized that we were asleep, like the, the other coworkers like, oh my gosh, we're so sorry that we were so loud. And then Sharkeisha had the nerve to fix her mouth and come in that room and say, and she was drunk. That's part of the problem, is we're going to get into mm-hmm. that in a second. It's Sharkeisha had a drinking problem. Um, but Sharkeisha came to the room and was like, um, you know, I was going to apologize for being loud, but y'all don't like me, so I'm not going to. And then she walked away. Oh, no, actually, she stood there for a second and just looked at us. And so I remember looking at them and being like, okay, so, like, (laughs) we busted out laughing. Like, we all just busted out laughing in her face and went to bed. Like, I was like, "Uh uh-uh. But, like, seriously? A giggle would not have came for me. I'm sorry. That's not what I would have We were laughing in her (laughs) face. And I remember when your friends came and told me, because I feel like they knew I didn't fool with her. When they came and told me, I was like, I know you lying. I said, thank God I was not a part of You weren't there. Uh, That would have been. Because even one of them was like, (laughs) she was like, when one of my friends got up, she's like, Jay, you want me to snatch her up? I can snatch her up. Nobody will know. I'm going to take care of it. I I was like, no. What we're going to do is how many times did I tell you all you got to do you is used say, to say the it, word. You used to say it all the time. And I'd be like, what we're not going to do is we're not going to do that. We're going to they just win. turn away and we're going to go over here and we're going to do this. And look, you're always like, look, I can take care of it right now. I ain't got no problem. Like, they no, guys. Win. We're not going to snatch her up. Um, so, yes, like y'all definitely were all were at odds many yes. of a time and it was it was many times it was thing she just you're right she had a very passive aggressive way mm-hmm. of saying things and I think living with her and working with her made just that all the more stressful of an experience I did used like, to love pointing that big old fan at her when she would walk through the thing so her wig would blow she would get her something wig would, she would just be to like her wig. stop it <laughs> Okay, she definitely loved it. Uh, loved I don't know if you were still it, working you know. there then, but they had bought those big old fans. It was oh, cool. no, and I, I used to always point them when she was. Yes, I know what fans you're talking about. Yeah, I was still there for that. <laughs> like, D, stop. And I'm like, girl, that oh, wig needs to stop. Oh, funny story. So, one time, so you know, when she was, I don't know if you were still here, but she was dating my friend or whatever they were doing. I don't know. Cause I don't yes. Know. Oh, no, 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 no. I, yeah, we were but, actually still living together when that was going on. Well, this this happened once you were you weren't here, and she was there then. She was staying over mm-hmm. there. Okay, and I so, yeah. One night we was uh we was all hanging out because you know we used to go we used to start to go over there all the time like after work, mm-hmm. not to hang out with her, but for him. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. You know why? So oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. And so one night it was so funny. One night we was all sitting on the couch just chilling. You know what I'm saying, partaking and all of that, and I looked to my right and there was like a hat rack on the door but at the end of the hat rack there was like a tumbleweed or something and so I looked at the door I looked at my friend and he was like y'all gotta go y'all gotta go because he saw in my face that I was about to do it because he saw me see it (laughs) And literally, me and him made eye contact. He's like, "It's time for y'all to go." Nope, it's time. For- I was like, "Why well, we got?" He said, "No, it's time for y'all to go. We are not doing because <laughs> he knew I was gonna go in and let you about to go in because <laughs> you know I used to love it. a good roast. <laughs> oh yes, this is a roast master right here. 
if you if you didn't know it before, you should know it now. Listen, this is I am not the person that you master. call in front. If something embarrassing happens to you, just don't let it happen. Oh my gosh. Please don't fall in front of her. Don't let it listen. Y'all, so we had this one guy who was No, married. you now I want you to tell, yeah, tell all the details. I'm gonna tell all the details because at the end of the day, it's still funny. And at the end of the day, <laughs> he hear what he wanna hear. So that's true too. <laughs> he was here, but that he was true hearing too. impaired. And so, okay, so me, I was coming out the kitchen and oh, another goodness. girl was coming in the wrong door. And I had some wonton tacos in my hand. Me and her run into each other. So I drop it and there's coleslaw in it. So it's like coleslaw and stuff everywhere. So I went and I got the mop. Now I'm not very tall. I wouldn't tell you that in person. If you say I'm not tall, I'm gonna deny it. But I'm not very tall. <laughs> the mop was bigger than me. So when I came with the mop, there was literally a trail <laughs> from where mm -hmm. I came from the back. I remember the this so vividly. <laughs> with oh the my mop, gosh. right? So I go out there. I call myself oh like my mopping up where I, you know, spilled the stuff where the coleslaw was. I put the wet floor sign up, y'all. I put you did. the wet you did floor sign up. <laughs> And, you know, I go on about my life. I'm standing at the top. I'm putting in an order or something like that. And the grace of God said, look to your right. It look was not right, God right. that told you to see that. That was, <laughs> you, you are not going to put that on God. I Something in my spirit said, D, look to your right. And I, as uh. I look over to my right. The guy is coming out the door. And when I tell y'all, it was like, y'all know how in the cartoons where they fall and, and then like the feet come from under them and everything go fly. <laughs> <laughs> it fell it so, was so hard. And, and then next I see Jay come running out, picking up the silverware, like, oh my God, are you okay? And I'm up there <laughs> dying. I am dying, y'all. I'm cackling. She was and then so what hard. made it worse, he gets up and he goes, oh, it's wet right there. And I died again. <laughs> Well, sweetie, everybody saw the the wet floor sign, but you, boo, we all. Oh know. my goodness! And so I then, felt so bad. And Jay was so, and the only people that saw it was me and one other person. So then, because I'm me, I'm telling everybody. Everybody I go in the kitchen, and I tell my real good girlfriend who got the loudest, most disrespectful laugh you will ever hear. And I. Ooh, go, I <laughs> Are you talking about the one who used to bartend? <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. Absolutely. And, and mind you, y'all, Jay is on Expo at this time. So when I go into the kitchen, he's right there. <laughs> and Jay is like fuming. He's so upset with me. <laughs> I was so upset with and you. And I'm telling her, I'm like, girl, he fell. Girl, he came out and he was I'm re And I'm one of those people, I will reenact it for you. Like, I'm going to show she you. She reenacted it multiple happened. times. <laughs> And when I oh tell my you, gosh. Jay was, we cackled so hard in that kitchen. I'm pretty sure everybody out there heard us. And Jay is just like, because it's not funny. Because y'all don't it realize funny. how obnoxious, <laughs> y'all don't realize how obnoxious the laugh of the girl she told <sighs> was. Because this girl, you tell her something funny and everybody's everybody going to know gonna that yep. she is tickled. <laughs> like, er and she laughs so loud. It's a that yeah. Like, <laughs> Even though that he was hearing impaired, I know he heard, oh, he heard laughs. It. Oh, he heard like, it. I know. There was no way he did. He could have had. And this is, I'm not being funny. Before anybody say I'm making a, a, an ableist joke, he could have had his hearing aid turned all the way down he and heard, heard this girl oh, laughing yeah. at him because oh, she yeah. was so loud with it. And I was like, oh, my gosh, y'all are awful. Jay was so I was like, y'all are so he bad. Really this hurt is, himself. He and it just hurt that himself. made me laugh even harder. She would. No matter what I said to tell her that it was wrong, it all was so much fun to her. Like, uh, <laughs> but that's honestly what has made our friendship so like perfect that we just balance each other. Like we are, yeah. I feel like we're a really good balance. We do. Um, but there have been many oh times gosh. where you had to hold your girl. Listen, I thank God for you. Because you know how many people I would have smacked. Uh, <laughs> you know how many people got smacked after you left? <laughs> right. Right. Ooh, which speaking of, we're going to come back to that. So we're going to take a super quick break, and there are some stories about some cokeheads, some fights, and <laughs> some Malcolm folks who got fired. <laughs> Look, folks who got fired because they was high and had a bad temper. And we're going to finish that on um, the 50 Lamb Chronicles when we get back from this show.
All right, so welcome back. I know that little teaser had to have you sitting on the edge of your seat because these stories right here are the cream of the crop. Yes. So let's talk a little bit about Miss D and her her um her need for the SmackDown. <laughs> Cause you were like you were ready for a championship belt. You was ready to in go to the defense, Royal Rumble. <laughs> at that point in my life, I I was not an arguer. Like if I don't if I don't mm-hmm. like you if I don't care about you if I'm not friends with you I'm not arguing with you. That's what true. you want to do? Like right. that's where I was with it. Okay, so what do you want to do about it? Is the question. <laughs> and be clear, question. I don't start nothing. This is I true. don't start nothing with nobody. But what you won't do is disrespect me or anybody that I fool with. You just won't do it. It's just not gonna happen. And some people feel like you know. I guess some people just felt like because I was goofy, like that they could like test the waters. And then when mm-hmm. I snap, oh, I'm crazy. And it's like, well, I knew that. That's why I'm goofy. I tried not to be. Which fight should we talk about first? Um, <laughs> let's talk about the fight that wasn't even my fault. It really didn't have nothing to do with me. <laughs> okay, let's talk about that one. So, y'all, so we had this drunk host, right? Mm-hmm. And she used to like always like weeble wobble through the door real slow anybody that worked at like an applebee's before there's an indoor and there's an outdoor and the indoor ain't that big so when you weeble wobbling through and servers we be moving fast like we try to get Mm -hmm. back to the kitchen drop this off come through come back around like and then we had the one manager who would trip out if you walk through the wrong door so you gotta go walk down the other side and so i guess like one of the other servers kind of like brushed her or like bumped past her Cause she was moving too slow and i guess she told i don't know I'm, she told her like the move i think i was here this be. night because i think i remember this were you still working there at that time I don't, I, this sounds familiar if it's the same person i think it is because i feel like she cried but keep going <laughs> well you know who the drunk host is oh i know that's what i feel like she cried but keep so, going now nobody thought anything of this right nobody and I guess the lady, she just held on to it. Like, she just felt like, oh, she pushed me. Oh, she did. Now, I don't know. I did not see it. I don't know if it was a push or not. I don't know. I, all I know is what the, the at the time, friend told me. And so the next day, everything is just going. We're just working. Everybody's minding their business. The drunk lady, she had a couple of her friends that had came to the store. And at this time, they had hired, like, this sorry manager that didn't know how to do any type of job at all. And so she, uh, they had kind of sat there all night, and they were sitting across from the bar. And were you there? Were you still working no, there? I was not. Okay. I know, now I know <laughs> this story. I know okay. this story now. Yeah, keep going. Keep going. They were yeah. sitting across from the bar. And I guess at some point later in the night because they had been there the whole night like they had literally been there all night and at some point during the night they decided to walk up to the bar and express that they had like a complaint or whatever the case may be and the girl that was bartending was like talk you got a problem talk to a manager don't talk to me Mm -hmm. she comes into the kitchen the bartender comes into the kitchen I'm standing there with the Alabama cook. We just chatting or whatever. And she come and she tell me what happened. And I literally verbatim, I say to her, girl, leave them people alone because I don't feel like fighting tonight. That's literally what I said to her, right? Mm. She gets some lemons because that's what she came back there for. She ain't had no lemons. She came, she get her lemons. She go back around. All I hear is, what the fuck? And then I see a lemon fly into the doorway and hit the ground. And I'm like, she walked out with lemons. And then I hear, I hear like some little rub. You know how you hear when a fight start, you hear the rumbling uh-huh. and the bumping and all this. So I'm like, what is going on? So me and him like, what the hell going on out there? We go walk to the doorway. And all I see is her. And I see two people on her. So I immediately, my first instinct is just like, oh, let me grab a bitch. Like, let me go, right. Look, let me hop <laughs> which in. Which one I'm going to yeah. get. And mind you, the people she was fighting, it was a daughter and a mother. It was like an older lady. So I grabbed the daughter while she was tagging the older lady. And so the manager runs into the office, closes the door, and not call the police or none of that. He calls another manager. <laughs> This sound while, about the, right. while the fight is still, while the so fight we're still is going fighting on. because at this when I walked out, nobody was breaking up the fight. Everybody, including the manager, was standing there watching it. 
So the Alabama cook, he he grabbed me first because I my thing is like I ain't really got no beef with none of y'all. I ain't got to mm-hmm. you know I just you ain't finna hit my friend. That's just not right. what you're gonna do. And so he grabbed her, and all she's yelling is she hit me first. She is hilarious. She she hit me first, and we like girl, we don't care about that. Like somebody get these hood rats out of here. So hmm. so then the the police come, and then my phone starts blowing up. The manager, and at the time, the other person that, because you were um, a shift manager, the other shift manager who started around the same time as you, that was a bartender mm-hmm. as well. She's the female calling shift my manager. Phone. Yeah, she's calling mm-hmm. my phone. Like, they all call me like, D, what is going on? What happened? I'm like, why are y'all asking me? I didn't do nothing. Well, I did. But I didn't do- <laughs> <laughs> right. I didn't start it. I didn't start it. I had nothing to do. I'm like, I don't know what is going on. I walked out and they was fighting. I don't know. So then, mind you, the next morning, I was supposed to expo. And I'm like, dang, am I going to get fired? Because at the moment, I wasn't thinking about, you just not going to jump my friend. Like, mm-hmm. me and her were friends. We was getting to know each Like, we weren't best friends yet, but we were getting to know each other. And so it's just like, that's my homie. Like, we cool. Like, you know, I'm going to jump my homie. Right. And so the next day, I'm like, dang. I'm like, and I'm expecting them to call me in the office, like, right when I get there. But they just let me go and do my job. So I'm ex. I'm like, bro, they better not let me sit here and do this job. And then and then fire me. And so then after they got the work out of me, <laughs> right? <laughs> the ball head manager he called me in and he like, and I'm thinking, okay, now we finna talk about it. He asked me about something else, and now it's now I'm really getting irritated because like I know y'all want to talk to me. I mm-hmm. know you do, and I know. So then the whole shift we like peeking in the door because they sat in the office the whole shift. So it's like I know y'all want to talk to me. I know y'all do. Y'all didn't bring me in here to ask me to pick up some more shifts. I'm like, so I'm not getting fired, but I know that y'all want to talk. Stop dragging it out. So Mm -hmm. then they finally call me in. And our favorite manager, the person who had that store on lock at the time, who, when he left, it crashed and burned. He called me in. He said, D, you didn't even try to break it up. Are you talking about? um, (laughs) The um, one with the initials. Yes. Okay. Perfect. That's what I was thinking of. That's what I was thinking of. The best. (laughs) Yes. Yes, and he goes, okay. he says, D, I'm going to be honest. You didn't even try to break it up. And the other manager goes, you just walked out and just started hitting people. And I'm like, well, what am I? I didn't know. <laughs> and Love they was it. like, listen, we understand that's your friend. And, you know, it was your instinct. It was like, you didn't even try to break it up, though. <laughs> I'm like, well, what was I supposed I don't break up fights. I was like, I'm going to be honest. Don't break I don't fight. break up fights. And I said, I really didn't think about it. I just saw two people on her. And my first instinct was just to run out swinging. And then the yeah. police, they had an attitude with us. They were, so, it was like they was upset that they got called over there. Like they had a whole attitude. And granted, obviously nothing happened to the lady who set her up. Because she swerved it down. She didn't know them people when you brought them in here and introduced them to everybody with your drunk self. Like, girl, what? Mm. Girl, what? Now, that's a conspiracy yeah. right there. <laughs> that was a hot mess. My knee was that's hurting a C-O-N after I'm like, girl, I did not. I just told her I wasn't trying to fight nobody. Like, um, <laughs> it was a mess. I just uh, didn't get so. <laughs> I just rem- like yeah. when okay so but after I, after I was ex um, a food expo for a minute I did become a shift manager and that's something I would probably never do in my life again mm. not for not for that company not for I Apple could tell you no. hated it <laughs> I loved what I did now I loved what I did um because I liked I liked the many different hats I got to wear I liked cooking and then going out you know taking care of a complaint. And then, but it seemed like it got to a point where they were like, we, the other managers were like, we don't feel like dealing with complaints. No, that's so what I'm all saying. Like, everybody all went night. to And like, <laughs> all night, I had to deal with all the complaints of all the mm-hmm. guests, all the complaints of all the team, all the complaints of all the cooks. Mm-hmm. And there'd be managers in the office chilling mm-hmm. while I'm out here ripping, running like a crackhead. Yeah, um, got you running around in your car again, looking crazy. Right, in my car. All over the place. Come on now. <laughs> and remember, I had my bandanas on because yep. my nickname... <laughs> I had a nickname Rambo, and I always did to keep the, the sweat out of my um my face. But mm-hmm. um, one story I'll never forget is we had a cook who now when I usually exposed, it got to a point where I got pretty good at expo, and I would usually get requested to expo certain shifts. So I was expoing one of my my typical shifts, like a Friday Saturday around that, and I want to say it was a Saturday night. And this cook in particular, he and I tip we would bump heads. 
Um, but it's just because he was such a strong personality and I didn't usually feel like arguing with him. I would, if I needed something and I didn't feel like arguing with him, I would just go over there and get it myself and do it mm -hmm. myself. I would just got past that point with him and he would feel disrespected when I did that. And I'd be like, well, if you had just well, gave it to me when I asked for it, right. we wouldn't have had this problem now, would we? Okay. Thought so. <laughs> so, um, but one night I just remember he gave me the hardest time. It was one of the nights I like. I almost walked out that night. That was a night when I was about to just be like, look, F this, F that, F you, right. F got you, all I'm going it. home. Y'all got, y'all can have all of this. I'm doing y'all a favor. And so I just remember this man, every time I said anything to him, he mocked me all night. He like, he act like he wanted to fight. They, all the other cooks were telling him to chill out. All the servers were telling him to chill out. Nothing could make this man calm down. At one point he went on a whole tirade because I asked him for like some sauce or something. And he went off. I said, you know what? I ain't saying shit else to you. I ain't got nothing else I need to say to you. So if y'all need something from him, y'all talk to him. And he'd be like, no, you talk to your ex. Don't say nothing to me. If it, if it has to deal with him, right. don't say it. So he ends up getting me to the point where I have to go outside. You know how to go outside and have my smoke break. I'd be like, Hello? I can't do it. I can't. I'd have to call my mom. I'd be like, mom, I need you to pray now. We got to go before <laughs> the throne because I'm about to lose it. And one night, I mean, he just went in. It got to the point where I was overwhelmed. I told them, I said, look, I can't have another night like that. I can't, I can't do it again. I'm done. They fired him the very next morning. And that to me is one of the most bitter. It was a bittersweet moment because I'm like, oh, I ain't got to deal with him no more. But I didn't want old dude to get fired. Come to find out he was on drugs. Oh, and huh. I didn't know. I thought he was just crazy. I didn't know mm -hmm. he was a full blown like cokehead but apparently that was something that was going on in our location yeah <laughs> there were a couple cokeheads okay. um heard some stories about some folks going in the bathroom <laughs> snorting some lines Shout while they snorting line they homie over there drinking uh drinking out the bottle in her purse get that. so as crazy as it was an environment the people were really what made it crazy mm -hmm. um the and it, and the crazy really thing crazy. is, it's the, the employees. It wasn't even really the customers like that. A lot of it times was, it was the employees. A lot of times it was the employees. Like the customers, I, I, I remember very few customers that were like just completely ridiculous. Right. Um, but it was usually the team. It was usually the team. Like from the then, top now there was another, I don't think you know about this one. I don't think I ever uh -oh. told you about this one, but remember remember the light-skinned big booty girl that like was she started out serving and she ended up bartending and she see like she would act like she was real real old but she wasn't that much older than us but she just seemed like she was is she the one who had the two kids yes so the one who was from new york i don't know where her, i don't know where well, she no no that's the same no that's the one minute natural hair yeah Okay, I know who you're talking about. I don't we know where she's from, people. though. We we're talking about two different people, but now we're on the same page. Now okay. I know who you're talking about. Now I wasn't yes. talking about the one who boyfriend was a cook. I'm talking about yes, that's who somebody I else. About first. No, 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 not now her. I the who, one now that I, know who you're talking I don't about. know if yeah, she ended up one. bartending when you were still mm -hmm. there. Or no, 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 not, she but... did. She did. I know who you're talking okay. about. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. So one day, first of all, f her. Let's just start with that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and secondly, secondly, besides F her, I also want to say we are protecting the guilty and the innocent. That's why we're exactly. speaking around people's names because exactly. it's not, it's not even necessary. It's just so, a key okay. key for us. It's not that it's we don't key steal. Key. It's not still that deep, but it's just, right. it's not we ain't deep. trying to expose nobody like that, like that. You know exactly. Because I, mean? I don't mm -hmm. fight no more. So I ain't got time to be exposing nobody because I don't want nobody trying to fight me. I Come ain't on, got time too much to, to lose at no this more. point. Exactly. So... Me and her always kind of like had this love hate type of thing. Like sometimes she felt like I guess she would be nice to me, and sometimes she just felt like she had an attitude. And you know <laughs> me, you're not coming over here with your attitude. I don't Absolutely care how not. grown you think you are. Absolutely. But she not. had got into the habit of of calling people kids and children, and I'm just mm. like. Ain't nobody tell you to have a baby, two babies when you was 12. That doesn't make you grown. That just Hello. makes you irresponsible. You Hello. know what I'm saying? That don't make mm -hmm. you grown. You ain't that much. You ain't but a few years older than this. You might look 35, but you're not <laughs> 35. <Yeah. laughs> Come on I'm still now. taking shots at this lady. She ain't no. <laughs> but I don't care. <laughs> it's the truth. And so me and her were always, because at that time, 
a lot of us that was bartending, you know, it was like we had our little bartend crew, but she wasn't a part of it because she act like she mm-hmm. was above it all. And mm-hmm. this particular day, I was expoing. And so now there was, I used to always like make sure my food went out, but see the servers at Applebee's have a tendency to come and reach in your window and take stuff Mm -hmm. that don't belong to them. Absolutely. And so I have said, okay, if you want to do my job, I'm going to go sit down. How about that? That's what I used to do. I'd be like, look, the only person who food I was making sure went out was the bartender. So I was sitting over at table 20 in the little horseshoe, which is right across from the bar. And yes. she had kind of made like a little passive aggressive comment to somebody else, but I was in earshot of like, oh, like she is she not working or something like that, or like she finna go or something like that. But it was very passive aggressive, basically trying to say like why she's sitting down, which is none of her business, because mind your business. Mm-hmm. I would say not mind your business. Because you know, they used to love to sit and be worried about what I I don't know why people was always worried about what I was doing. Like they were always Jealousy. so bi- and they used Jealousy, to they used to swear me that oh D can do whatever she wanted to- yeah but I do my job and I'm better than mm-hmm. you at it <laughs> you know Come what I'm saying now. like so I go back in the little thing or whatever and she comes in fussing about a salad that I had already <laughs> sent out right and I'm mm-hmm. telling her it's already gone and she's still trying to argue with me about it mind you I'm not giving her any energy surprising mm-hmm. right. I'm giving her Not no energy. I'm just like, girl, that's already go because you look. She looks stupid, so it's no point. I'm not going back and forth with you. You look stupid, and I know your salad's out there. So the person that I sent out there with her salad, like, like God just was like, I guess God told that person go and walk in the kitchen, and she just walks in, and I'm like, didn't you take that salad to so and so at this spot? And she was like, yeah. I was like, oh, okay, I thought so, and so <laughs> I guess that wasn't good enough for the old lady. Because she still felt the need. And so I was like, I was like, but what you back here aggressive with an attitude for? And mind you, there's a bunch of servers standing in the at the drink station, which is right behind the expo, right? They're mm-hmm. all standing there. And she turned around to them. Do I sound aggressive? Do I sound like I got an attitude? And they all just kind of looking like, like it was like, yeah. it, it got dead silent in there. Because everybody's <laughs> kind of like, girl, you yelling right now. Like what? Right. And so... Mind you, the whole time she's doing all this, I'm literally, all I'm doing is looking up at the screen, bumping stuff off, and I'm still giving people, I'm giving her nothing, because she looked stupid. That's my favorite thing to do. She was over there on the other side, like where the salad stuff is, by fry side, she was over there still talking, and still, and she made the comment, because I don't play with people, children, she, I don't, I ain't gonna fight nobody, child, something like that, and I was like, I turned, I looked at her, I said, well, I'm not a child, so what's up? (laughs) And she, what you mean, what's up? You said you don't play with people's children. I am not a child, so what's up? Now, mind you, by this time, Alabama didn't walk back, because he know me, so he saw Mm -hmm. it, he saw it coming. He saw it bubbling and boiling while I'm trying to, Mm -hmm. it's like I'm trying to ignore you, and you still talking, but what you're not going to do is make, like, that child comment, I don't know why, but it just, it really burned, like, that one was the one that got me. (laughs) That was the one yeah. I did not ignore. It was that uh, he didn't fact. came, mind you, he came around the line like a thief and like he teleported because one minute <laughs> he was over there, the next minute he was over here in between us. I, right. didn't, even, <laughs> I didn't even see him walk around because I was just so focused on her. Like, mm-hmm. what's up? Like, I'm not a child, so what's up? Like, what you mean? Like, I'm like, what you what you saying? Like, what you trying to do? Because I'm not right. a child. Like, so when, by the time he comes around the line or whatever, and she was like, what you mean was I said, I'm not a child, so what's up? Now, as soon as, you know how as soon as somebody get in between, now she done jumped in his arms, like she finna try right, to get like she, to me. Like, like he holding Everybody her Everybody then snatched me back, and I'm like, this bitch is not finna touch me anymore. Like, she's <laughs> not finna do, because mind you, the whole time that we were arguing, we were literally standing right next to each other. Right. And she didn't jump not once. 
as soon as somebody come around and try to get in the middle of it, she didn't jump into their arms. Like, oh, what you so trying weak. to, so what you want to do? Da, 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 da. So they didn't took me to the back and they took her outside. So then she goes outside. Now, mind you, you know how big that gate is between where the trash is and where the parking lot is. She mm-hmm. on the other side of the gate talking about, so we outside now. We outside. I said, girl, it's a whole, girl, it's a whole 20 foot gate in between It's a whole gate right here. It's a whole 20 foot gate in between us. You look, st- and I said, nobody is going to let me get from back here all the way through the kitchen, through the restaurant, and out the door to get to you. Nobody's going to let me do it. <laughs> I'm not, because everybody is standing back here with me right now, trying to make sure I stay dumb. back here. Yeah. <laughs> but like, dumb. she blew me. And then because of that incident, because I had got wrote up for that incident, mind you, I'm like, I ain't even. I was minding my business, doing my job. <laughs> she came at issue with me. So then, because I had got wrote up for that incident, that's why I got fired for this next incident. Oh, yes. <laughs> this one. So the whole shift has gone by. It's time for me to go, right? The night before, a drunken idiot had got into it with somebody and I had literally calmed that person down the night before to the point where and they were so belligerent to the point where that same night they had apologized to me for their behavior and then the next night they come in drunk again can't handle their liquor and they own the same type of time now it was time for me to go but I guess they had got them a little pop or a little rush or whatever because I was the bartender that left at 10. And so I was back there helping them on Expo, even though I was done for the night. And Mm -hmm. my best friend at the time, she was done for the night. So she was just waiting for me so we could just go ahead and bounce because she had already been done. Right. And so this person, I don't even know. I really don't even know what started it. I'm not going to lie. I can't even tell you what started it now. I don't even remember. It was probably a slick remark, honestly. It was. And it's like, and I kept telling him, Cause he was just doing too much and he was being real over like real belligerent and just doing too much. And so it got to the point where I'm like, okay, get out of my face. I asked him a few times. I'm like, get out of my face on the other side, directly across from me on the line is a manager. I was saying, get out of my face so calmly, but that they didn't even realize what was about to happen. What was going on? Yeah. <laughs> but it's because I was trying to, I'm just like, yo, get out of my, cause I knew he was drunk. And so it's like, I'm not finna, because I know you're drunk, and I know that's why you're acting like this. So I'm like, get out of my face. And he kept going, and he kept, oh, well, if I doing all the extraness. And so mm-hmm. I said, I said, you got five seconds to get out of my face. And I said, one, two, he said three, and child, that hand went, pow! <laughs> like, the hand just oh. took over. <laughs> and before the other hand could get up, my best friend at the time, who was standing right, she saw the other hand coming, and she immediately grabs me and snatches me off. Because I'm like, you tried. He tried he me did when he try said it. three. He tried it when he said three. He really did. He tried it when you he know, said You know, I never saw that side of that person. Like, I never. Because when you told me what what happened i didn't because at this point i'd already left georgia Mm -hmm. so at this point i'd already left georgia for all of our listeners but you know when you told me about this situation i was like that person really i was like i've never seen that side of them they've always been like someone easy to work with and yeah he was he was a really cool fun person but once he got drunk he was a different person yeah because i've i've been out with this man we hung out we have kicked it we didn't drunk together but he was just i don't know if maybe he was going through something at the time Mm. because he could have just had a lot going on i don't know yeah but he was drunk and that's the reason why i was trying so but when he said three if you're not gonna get out of my face i'm gonna get you out of my face i'm gonna move very clear on that (laughs) i offered you to move i asked you to move several times and i'm giving you the benefit of the doubt and leeway because i'm cool with you and i know you drunk because if it's somebody else it would have really been a problem. <laughs> it would have been no counting. <laughs> Ugh, that's so crazy. No, yeah, like I'm. I wish I had been there for that moment because maybe I could have, you know, de-escalated. But you know, everything happens the way it's supposed to happen. It is. Everything happens the way it's supposed to. And it I, I bet you it anywhere. taught him a look. I bet you it taught him a lesson. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, I bet I'm, he won't I'm, say three like that no more. 
And let's be clear, um, I don't have an issue with him. I know he was just drunk at the time. We good, but don't count when I'm counting. Just get out right. of my face. <laughs> and you know, like I think that was a, a even a big lesson for me um, in my experience working in the food service industry is working with. There are so many people who have different. You run across a lot of people with different vices and different mm-hmm. demons that either they're running from or they're running with. Mm-hmm. And um, I I remember I probably shouldn't tell that person's story, but. I'll tell it briefly. There was someone who, um, no, I'm not going to do them like that today. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> you know, we got to use a little wisdom in the content. Yeah. Um, but, you know, people were going, there were people who we experienced that were going through different situations that, right. you know, really had nowhere else to turn. Yeah, and um, we all were. Because we were, we were so we all, medicating you know, in our herbal ways, you know, we did this our. This is true. Hey, we this did is our true. thing, so I ain't judging. I'm just saying, and, but you got to know how I, to handle it. Say, you got to know how to handle it. And another thing is like, it got to a point with some of their behaviors where mm-hmm. it wasn't just them hurting themselves anymore. Mm-hmm. Now you're affecting, you know, the community around you. Mm-hmm. So um, that goes to say, you know, <laughs> just always be mindful of your energy, be mindful of where you are and what you're going through and how that could affect those around you. Mm-hmm. But also start learning those nonverbals because you need to be able to like, there are certain people, um, my, my old roommate was also an alcoholic and there's just certain things I can pick up on people now mm-hmm. that I'm just like, ooh, that's suspect. We're going to let you stay where you at, and I'm going to get in my car and go my, my business. And You're like, would, like you, if she only knew how much teaches, you defended her, because literally every conversation you had, I was like, she got to go. <laughs> I used go. to defend her all the time. <laughs> and it wasn't until I remember, I remember the conversation having to tell her, like, this isn't going to work. You've got to move out. Like, we, this isn't going to work. Mm-hmm. I don't know what you're going to do. I don't know where you're going to go. But that's not my problem anymore. You got to go. Very and even that didn't go smoothly. Like, <laughs> even that just like, goodness. But um, so before we get out of here, uh, we hope you have enjoyed the shenanigans <laughs> that are the food service industry. Because it, I mean, there's craziness. And for the parents out there who happen to be listening, I would like to leave you with a piece of advice. If you have never worked in the food industry or in retail, when your children get old enough to work, get them a little summertime gig or a little holiday gig working in one of those environments, post-COVID, of course, because I feel experience. like it's very humbling and it teaches you, one, how to tip. It teaches you how to talk to people. Like, there's so many things that you kind of have to learn mm-hmm. from being in an experience of serving others. Mm-hmm. And whether that's in retail or that's in food. I think everybody should have that that experience of working, and we're blessed. We've had, we worked in both, um, so um, that's what we have for you guys as far as like you know a little bit of like those story times. So before we get out of here, we do have as always our for the culture, our okay. business shout outs. D, who you got for us this week? So the black owned business that I have for you guys this week is one that I've actually done work for before. Ooh, yes. Um, and it is a concierge bar service company called Moving and Mixing. Um, it's Ooh, run yes. by two gorgeous black women um, that I love dearly. And I actually got into it from a friend of mine, Sai. We used to bartend together at the place I went to after Applebee's. But <laughs> Sai was always, she's like such a sweet, amazing person, but she's very much about her business. She's very much somebody that I actually look up to. And so the company is called Moving and Mixing. You guys can book them. And actually now they've started doing um fun little bar kits so for the holidays if you guys want to get like a bar kit it has like little drinks and stuff in it um they do classes i'm not sure it's covid so i'm not really sure too much how they doing with the classes and stuff but i know they did do like fun little bar classes teaching people how to bartend and stuff like that um are they um based in atlanta they are based in atlanta yes okay um and the instagram is moving with an OG, M-O-V-I-N, underscore N, underscore mixing, M-I-X-I-N, moving and mixing. Yes, moving so and mixing. So definitely check them out. They're a concierge bartending and MC host service. They do all types of events. I've done, I've done house events. I've done events that are in bigger places. I've done all types. I've done private parties. I've done all types of things with them. 
Um, they always, you know, reach out for your girl every now and then when they need an extra bartender. Yeah. Um, so definitely check them out. Definitely show them some love. Get into their page. Check out some of the recipes. Check out the boxes that they're doing. And if you need some bartenders, book them. Period. <laughs> you know, child, I should probably get back into bar bartending as a side gig because I used to actually really enjoy bartending. Did like, I show you my bar parties. set? I have a gold no. bar set. Yes, yeah, it used to be like my thing for like little, I used to, and you know, I, I'd have those little dinner parties at my house and I'd have like mm -hmm. a little cocktail of the night and little food. I don't know. I just love that, that type of thing. Yeah. Now my um business that I'm shouting out this week is I always love when I get to shout out businesses of people that I know or that I went to school with. And so um I went to school with this girl, she had a different last name when we were in school together. Um, But when we were at, um, college her name is amber jefferson now she did get married to one of our classmates from college and she has a company called picture perfect creations llc mm -hmm. and so you replace all the c's in those words with k's and that's what you got <laughs> um because she actually is a member of alpha kappa alpha sorority incorporated ah. so it's kind of cute you know and yeah. she has a lot of like little aka themed um t-shirts and whatnot that they sell but she really focuses on creating custom um, apparel or custom um, different little like tumblers and caps and, and um, hmm. like even diaper bags and ornaments. So she has all types of custom things that can be monogrammed. You can find her on Facebook and on, she has an Etsy shop. And again, the name of that is Picture Perfect Creations LLC. I love Amber. She's such a beautiful spirit. Um, super communicative. She's great at like breaking down the different details that they offer and she's really quick at responding. Yeah. Um, and I, again, I just love her energy. She's so awesome. Aww. So <laughs> that is um, Picture Perfect Creations LLC. And those are all with K's. There are no C's. Yeah, so shout out to Amber and shout out to Cy in Jersey at Moving and Mixing for the culture. Black yes. women dipping and doing it. I love it. Yes. I love doing it. it and doing it and doing it. Yeah. yeah. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> so as always, as always, thank you so much, 50 Lem fam, for tuning in for another episode of the 50 Lem Chronicles. If you